Hello, in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about airfoil basics. So the basics that you need to know about airfoils. So an airfoil is simply just the cross-sectional shape of a wing, a blade of a propeller, rotor, or a turbine. It's simply the cross-sectional area. It's not the entire wing. It's just if you took an airplane wing or a propeller wing and you just sliced it in half and you looked at the cross-sectional area, that is what a airfoil is. And this is how the shape of an airfoil determines a lot about how that, how that airplane or the rotor creates lift, moves material, produces lift, has, you know, induced, creates drag. A lot of it has to do with the shape of the airfoil. So let's learn some basic terminology when it comes to an airfoil. So the front here, so if the air, the wind, is coming this way, the first part it hits is the leading edge. So kind of distinct characteristic of airfoil is this rounded leading edge. So that it's very rounded, and all airfoils you see will have a rounded leading edge. Now some like higher performance aircraft, that will get thinner and thinner, but for most it's very rounded compared to the trailing edge, which is almost always a kind of a point, a sharper point. So the trailing edge is the back of the airfoil. Now there's a couple things that you then you can break the airfoil down farther. So if you draw a straight line like I did here from the leading edge to the trailing edge, this is called the cord. Let's see. So that is simply just a straight line between the leading edge and the trailing edge. And then if you want to calculate your angle of attack, which is designated by an alpha, that is the angle. So let's say we draw an airfoil kind of at a angle here. So it's a very steep angle. But this is our airfoil. And so our cord line would look something like that. And if our wind or air is coming in like this, this angle right here is our angle of attack. Now, this is very large compared to actually as most planes airfoils fly from zero to 15 degrees. This is obviously more than that, but just so you could see that this right here is designated as the angle of attack. So I try to draw this one as a symmetric airfoil. So the what a symmetric airfoil means is that the difference in the size. So the, the shape is it's a symmetrical shape. It's a symmetric airfoil. So there's no camber. So the camber line runs exactly on the cord line. Now for an airfoil like this, which has a weird shape here. So this is the top and this is the bottom. Kind of a poorly drawn. But as you can see, the cord line, which is this first one, C-H-O-R-D, that runs from the leading edge to the trailing edge. The cord line is simply the, the the middle line. It's called like the mean camber line. It's if you took the distance between the top and the bottom, so the mine's a little off because it's very bulbous on the bottom here. But if you just took the the different the area, the, the distance between this the bottom and the top, the middle right there is the camber line. So this is how so there's a difference between the cord line and the camber line for asymmetrical airfoils. So this curvature is what gives most airfoils lift at a zero angle of attack. So it can create lift at a zero angle of attack. If it's a symmetrical airfoil at zero angle of attack, it's not creating any lift because the pressure differences between the top and the bottom are exactly the same. Now, if you had a symmetric airfoil and had it at an angle of attack, it will then create lift. So there's a naming convention for basic airfoils. It's called the NACA naming convention. Um, you'll see a lot of like a NACA, let's say like a 2412 or a NACA like a 0012. So these are four digit designations for the kind of the shape of an airfoil. Now, what do these mean? So the first letter 
That describes the maximum camber. as a function of the the chord length. So just the distance, so the maximum camber as a percentage of the chord length. And then the camber is, this is the mean camber line, but the camber is the distance between the chord and then the mean camber line. So let's say the, if let's say this number was a, you know, a, a four, the first digit was a four, that means that the camber, the large, the maximum camber on that aircraft is, or that airflow is 4% of what the chord line is. So if the chord was a meter, that the, the, the maximum camber would be uh, one, four one hundred, so four percent. So it would be about four centimeters. Okay. Then the second letter, or second number, not letter, describes the distance that maximum camber is located or where the maximum distance camber is located. So if it's a four, and then this is, four, so if it's like a four, that means, so this, the first letter is a, so if it was a four, it'd be a 4%. If the second letter is a four, that's 40%. So, so if a two, so this would be 2% max camber located at 40% from the leading edge along the chord line. So if it was, if they're again, if the chord was one meter long, chord length was one meter, the maximum camber, so the maximum distance between the mean camber line and the chord would be at 40 centimeters from the leading edge. So it would be like right here would be the max camber is if it was a NACA 2412. And then the last two digits describe the maximum thickness. of the airfoil. So no matter where the camber is, where the cord, where the cord line is, this is, and then as a percent. So if it's, so if it's a 12, that means the maximum thickness of that wing is 12% of where, 12% of the cord. So again, if our cord is one meter long, the maximum thickness of that airfoil is 12 centimeters, or 12% of one. So then the NACA 0012, the zeros means, well, the first zero says there's no camber. So there can't be a location of that camber along the wing. So it's just zero, zero, then one, two, it still says the maximum thickness is 12% of the airfoil, uh, the cord line. It doesn't really tell you the location it's located, but it just says the maximum thickness of that airfoil is 12% of the cord line. So those are just the basics of airfoil naming convention, characteristics of an airfoil. Thanks for watching.